and I'm going to uh, get started. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about today is we're, we're going to be talking about uh, blogging for growth. And with that is, you know, how to set up your website uh, to make sure that uh, when you're writing content, you're writing it to an audience that might not be there yet, but will be there eventually, but writing to an audience that you want to attract to your business. So in my case, I'm a WordPress web developer who primarily, prim primarily focuses on um, functional medicine practitioners and the like. Okay, I do websites for, for other industries, but my main core focus is on functional medicine practitioners, not doctors. Um, I do a few dentists, but it's mainly functional medicine practitioners uh, with offices uh, that, I'm, that I'm trying to attract to my business. Okay, so you've got to work out who your audience is. Is it, is it um, um, usually with functional medicine practitioners, it's um, people with, with um, you know, um, f fairly affluent um, uh, uh, people of the so demographic of your, of your society. Where do they live? What suburbs do they live in? Um, what's their age range? Is it, is it uh, women from, say, 40 or 35 to 60? Is it, you know, so what you do is you work out who your target audience is. If you had your dream clients, who would they be and, um, and how old would they be and where would they be from, okay? And that's always a good starting point, okay? So from there, you obviously want to build your services around that, okay? Uh, around your your dream clients. So when you're blogging, it's if when you're writing, you're writing to those people. Okay. So with functional medicine, it, you know, normally an article will probably start with a a condition, and then you'll talk about the the treatment that's available for that condition, and then the outcomes that can be expected from that um, from that uh, treatment. Okay, so what you want to weave into all of that is content geared towards the, your, your dream client. So let's just say your dream client lives in South Beach, Miami. So you want to talk about somebody that you've treated before with that condition from South Beach, Miami. Maybe mention that she went to school at, uh, at uh, University of Florida or um, her, and her kids go to, you know, South Beach Primary School uh, in Miami. Uh, you know, you don't have to mention the person's name, but you, you get the idea of what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, show you how I've written an article or how I'm writing an article and how I go about uh, doing the things that I'm asking you to do. So let's just jump in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to share my Google Chrome and let's uh, click on there and you should be able to see now you should be able to see my my um my uh, my screen and uh, with that can you see my screen there michael just give me a nod if you can okay so with my screen um you should be able to see my title so i've written the title as creating an seo rich wordpress post it's pretty general if i was to do something for a treatment it would be um uh, how Miami, um, how Miami Beach is tackling type two diabetes, Wh whatever it can be, but maybe weave a couple of words in there that you want to rank for in in the search. Okay, so as the introduction, the first paragraph you write is really critical because that's really your marketing paragraph. Okay, so your marketing paragraph is is explaining what people can expect from the rest of your article, okay? And that's what your marketing paragraph's all about. So try to keep it rich. So I've got SEO rich is gonna be my key phrase, probably. Um, I could go SEO rich WordPress, but you never really want it to be more than two words if you can help it. Um, that's gonna be my key, uh, my, my ranking key phrase. So you can see I've put in the first paragraph, I've put that in there twice. And I try to get that for key phrase at the start of the at the start of the paragraph okay all right so now i then go on and i've created a title and as you can see it's a h3 so your title title tags for your blog post it should be broken up 
one or two paragraphs maximum between each one. Okay, it doesn't have to be a massively long article, but it's got to be broken up that way. And that way it becomes a lot, a lot more readable. If you have like, you know, five paragraphs all tied together, it's not going to look good, you know. Um, so let's go into it. So an SEO rich blog page should contain natural key phrases. Okay, so in my case, I'm looking to get functional medicine practitioners and rank for those, uh, the, for the words that I think that functional medicine practitioners looking for a web designer might type. It's very hard for me because not many functional medicine practitioners are going to type in, um, uh, they'll probably type in something like doctor website design or something like that. So it's very generic. And so that's going to be very hard for me to rank for. But, you know, I'm looking for the people who are a little bit smarter than that. So maybe typing in functional medicine practitioner website design. Okay. So um, you can see here, I've got a few few words that, a uh, few key phrases that I've linked. And where I've linked them to, I've actually linked them to um, a services page for functional medicine website design. Okay. And I can show you that page here. So here's my, fun here's my services page. And this one specifically for functional medicine website design. I would just get to the point, a, a couple of paragraphs and I get a free quote, okay? And I've got some um, lists there as well of the certain features. So I've ranked there, I've done about two or three links there to, the, to, to, uh, to that page. And I'm also linking externally. So when I link internally, I set my link up like this. I don't have it open, in, open a link in a new tab. I use the phrase, the key phrase, the total key phrase, and then I put the link on that key phrase, okay? And I'm linking to my services page. In your case, it would be something type 2 diabetes if that was, if that was a page that you had or nutrition, uh, nutritional counselling, whatever, work out the phrases. And we'll get to that as we drill down on the article a little bit further. So I've, I've written an article, an introduction article, what is a SEO rich blog post? So it's a, an SEO, SEO rich blog post is full of natural search terms. You write them so that people can read the article, but you include them anyway. But just make sure you're not just making phrase after phrase after phrase because that's not going to work for you. So the reason we, we, we want to rank for key phrases because natural key phrases are, are, are the phrases that human beings type into, the, into Google search. Okay, so as an example, I want to rank for, I don't want to rank for doctor if someone just types in doctor. I want to, I don't even want to rank if someone types in functional medicine practitioner because they're not looking for me. But if somebody took, uh, types in a functional medicine practitioner website design Miami or functional medicine practitioner website design, that's what I want to rank for. So here I've sort of, I've sort of done this for, for you if somebody's searching for a functional medicine practitioner, they're not going to type in doctor and then press search or functional medicine practitioner and press search. They're going to type in functional medicine practitioner Miami. Now, you've got to remember, most people will know who are looking for you that you're, they're looking for a functional medicine practitioner. They're not looking for the, for the general doctor. They've been there. Okay, they're, they're now advancing. So make sure all the, all the areas that you work in, in here it might be Miami, Miami Beach, North Miami Beach, Sun, Sunrise, I can't remember the name, um, but Hollywood, uh, or Hollywood, Miami, you know. So think about all the different towns and areas around you that you want to rank for and write articles like with, with a phrase like, so if you're looking for a functional medicine practitioner in Miami, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, same with the nutritionist, you know, uh, we've been offering nutrition services in Miami for, or we, I met with a lady from, um, who was uh, looking for a nutritionist in Miami, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So how do we know what words people are using? Well, this is where we're going to dive in and we're going to have a look at two things, Google key AdWords keywords, uh, Google AdWords keyword planner and Google search console. So the AdWords keyword uh, planner is actually part of Google AdWords, but it's free, okay? So you can log in and I'll just show you the Google Keyword Planner, and I just did one for functional medicine website design. Now this is, this is basically showing you the results that, that are directly from Google. They want you to advertise, so they're, they're gonna show you all the data for it, okay? So for me, I don't wanna rank for this, but if I was you, I would wanna rank for this, functional medicine doctor near me. 
So what you would do is you'd create a spreadsheet of all the different phrases that you would want to rank for. All of these and add your, and in each, in each one, look, functional medicine, Los Angeles. These are words that people are typing in. And what happens is Google shows you how many average monthly searches are for these phrases. So the really big ones like 10 to 100K, like holistic medicine, people are just searching online. But a holistic medicine Miami, they're looking for someone in Miami. Okay. So you look at how, many, how, many, how much they're used and you can say, okay, and it shows you how much competition for those words are. But you, you're not going to advertise, but what you're going to do, or you, you may want to advertise, what you're going to do is you're going to put these into a spreadsheet and say, okay, these are the phrases I want to rank for. So for me, only net naught to 10 people per, per month type this in, okay? Um, so so that, you know, this is actually in the last 12 months, actually. So it's very few people type that in. So I want to be, I want to really drill down in there and get as many of these phrases. But I don't want to use just functional medicine because it's a waste of my time. But at functional medicine website, web design, website design, web developers, all that sort of stuff. Okay. So we have a look through here and you, you go through them all and you copy and paste every single one that you want to rank for. And you can even do a, a search and type in a URL of one of your competitors and then look at, they'll show you all the, all, the, all the links from that competitor, all the key phrases from that competitor. Okay. So the Google Ad uh, Keyword Tool is a really great tool to use, okay? And there's more tools up here in AdWords. If you've got a Google account, just, you can just log in. You don't need to uh, add a credit card. You can just use these tools anytime you want, okay? So here, is the, uh, here, here are some of the different tools that you can use with Google AdWords. Keyword Planner, all that sort of stuff, okay? So, so now that we've got the words, the, the phrases we want to use, let's jump into... Google Search Console. Now, Google Search Console is a is basically the 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 greatest tool you're ever going to have for your website. So you click. So let, let's just say we're we're in here. We're we're on my one, and this is basically showing me all the different phrases that people use where I actually rank in Google with. Okay, so this shows you every single key key phrase that's being used. Um, that's finding me. So if someone types in Medical Marketing Inc., 56 people have typed that in the, in the last uh, month, last three months, sorry. 56 people have typed that in, and I'm, 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 my average ranking is 5.6 for that key phrase, okay? But nobody has clicked on me. Poor me, okay? So when people search for my business name, of course I come up, you know, I'm not even coming up number one, I'm 2.2. .2. Okay, and there's some of my uh, clients in here as well uh, that people will search for, and then some of them don't click on me, but some of them do. Okay, so all of these different phrases, you want to see how you're ranking. Something to remember is there's two types of search ranking as well, because what you have is you've got local search, and then you have um, you know international, national, national, national search. Okay, so you know, it, it, the ranking is going to be mixed between the two, but it's showing you the averages, okay? So what you want to do is you want to go through these key phrases, and there's probably a lot of them, okay? Um, and some of them you don't want to rank for, but you want to go through, there's over a thousand for me. So these are all, all phrases that people have typed into Google search where my, my link to my company website, yakadanda.com, is ranking somewhere. So I might be ranking here, I'm ranking 35th page, a 35th, sorry. That's no good for me at all. So I can show you the worst one, I'm 220. So I'm not even, like there, I'm ranking 220 for WordPress designer, but I don't want to rank high for that. So these are all generic terms, they're not being very specific. So I don't really want to rank for those, okay? So, and it's going to be impossible for me to do that. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go through all of these and say, okay, which of these words do I really want to, to do well with uh, in Google search. And then from those words and the Google keywords, I'm going to start using those phrases in my articles. And when I use those phrases, I'm going to link to the services pages I've created. So let's just jump back in here and go back into the article. So what we've done there is I've shown you a little bit about Google uh, Keyword Planner, and you can put any phrase in there that you like, and it will give you a whole heap of results each time and your Google Search Console tool. 
Okay, and I've given you a link for both of those. Okay, so the next thing um, we want to we want to do is we want to create um, we want to create the services pages to link to. Okay, so in my case, I've only got a couple, but I've got the functional medicine website design. So I want to link to this URL from my article. In your case, it might be nutrition uh, nutrition uh, programs. It might be uh, any of the conditions that you treat, having a really well fleshed out page, even if it's not on the main menu, even if it's just a page you've got within your, your site that you don't have publicly, create the pages for all of these things that you want, all the conditions that you treat, okay? So what should be included on a services page? So I'll actually talk about this here, where you should have an introduction article and maybe even an intro video will be fantastic. Keep it under two minutes if you can. Then what you want to do is you want to have a um, you want to have um, an FAQ on, on that on that service you provide like frequently asked questions. You, know, you can do them in little short little one minute videos even better. Then any related articles pulled into that that are related to that to that service. Um, maybe even some tagged Instagram. So when you create an Instagram post and it's on diet and you you have a nutrition page, you can tag it diet and then when you pull your instagrams in you can pull in for certain categories okay uh, uh, under under tags okay and you can even create playlists on, on on youtube so a good idea would be create a playlist on youtube that is um for each of your services okay you create a category in your wordpress for each of your services okay so that's basically the services pages okay that's something you're going to have to set up if you haven't got it set up already. Um, so then, we're cr now we're ready to create this blog post, okay? And basically, I've weaved in, as we, we spoke about some of those phrases in Google Search Console, I've actually weaved them into the blog post and I'm linking to my, um, to my web, to my homepage, to my services page, to the actual service page for that thing I wanna rank for, okay? So now you've got your, you've got your article fleshed out and, and um, and you, if you've got your services pages done and you've put your free phrases through it, now we've got to find the right image. So a lot of people use um, really tacky, oh, well, you know, I'm going to be talking about diet nutrition, so let's get a person holding an apple that, that just looks like a, a, lame, um, a lame photo. It looks like it's a stock image. Stay, try to stay away from those. So I've given you some links here to some of these sites. Now, these sites are curated by companies and they rely on some advertising dollars on there. However, all of them are, are feature photos from photographers that give their photos away for free. Okay, If you can credit them in the article, great, do so. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you one of them, which is called Pexels. And I could type, uh, I could type in uh, new uh, healthy eating. Wait for the results, and there you've got a whole bunch of articles. And I use these all the time. So now we've got the image. Let's just say we've selected the image. We want to download the image to your computer. Okay. So what I do is I'll download the image to my computer. And in this case, let's just say I, I picked this image, which I haven't. But then I click here. I just want the meat. I want 1280. Anything over a thousand pixels is going to be gold for, for an article. Then I'll download it. But what I'll do is I'll actually rename it. So instead of it being Pexels Photo 7944443, I'll rename it. I'm going to show you what I've done here. You know, I've, I, I baked the cake earlier. And so I'm going to show you what I've done here. And you'll see here, I've renamed this image. See, I've got creating a rich word. I've renamed it the same as my title. Okay. Now, here with, the, with your title and description, you can write a little different caption if you want. But this is the key, the title and your alt text. The alt text is what Google uh, uh, Google picks up in search. Okay, so we've renamed the image so we know that uh, Google, you know, we get some little ranking for that. But then we're also renamed the alt text. Okay, um, and we've named the alt text. So you can name it whatever you like. You can describe the image if you like. Okay, all right. So that's basically that. And then I, if I had a video with this, I just put the URL to YouTube or Vimeo there, and then that will be a Vimeo post, a Vimeo photo. So I've added the image to here. Okay, so now I've got the image taken care of, okay? 
Um, so finishing it off. So what you want to have to finish off your article is obviously want to do a spell check, which I've just done there and screw, screw, screwed that up a little bit. And I talk about make sure that your um, that your uh, that your marketing message is sh is short and describes your article. And then what you want to do is add some tags. And here are the tags here. But be, importantly, you want to add tags that are any of these words here must be inside the article here. Don't just add add tags for the sake of adding, adding a tag because it will negatively impact you. Okay. So Google wants to know that what you're doing is supporting the content you're creating. It's not there for, and they know they're not their algorithms and their bots and all these sort of things are a lot clever, a lot more clever than what we are. Okay. So I've created some categories for it, some tags. Here I've got sidebar where hide on mobile. And that means if somebody's looking at my article on a mobile phone, they're not going to get the sidebar loading the sidebar as well. And they've some, done the same with the footer. I want it to be distraction free browsing uh, when they come to it. But if you've got some products or mark uh, or pro programs in your footer, then just leave that unchecked. Okay. So as you can see, I've got the article um, and the, we're going to finish up pretty shortly, but I'm going to talk now just about just finishing it off. So here I've got post options. If somebody uses the back button, so a lot of people use the back button on their phone rather than your browser. Most people do. Okay. So when they click on their back button, you want it to go back to the blog or you can select what page you want it to go back to. And here's my little marketing message and that's called an excerpt. So when I share that, it's going to pull in the excerpt as well. And when you look at it on the website, it's going to pull in the excerpt. So let's just go over the final, the finishing it off. So posting the article, what you want to do is um, when you post the article, you make sure you've taken care of all this. So just a quick overview of everything. Got the tags right, got the categories right, got the sidebars, got the excerpt, got the back button link. I'll put a little 100 pixel space at the bottom just to give it a bit of breathing space. Okay, make sure the author's right if you've got multiple authors. Okay, image, everything, everything looks really good now. Okay. So now I'll be ready to post it and I'll click publish. Now, should I publish now at 5.23 p.m.? No, okay, obviously not. So let's have a look at when you should be posting it. And you can just do a search online for this, but here, just uh, I'll include this, this link in the article, but this is a really good article here. So what it tells you about, it talks about the best time to post, okay? Now, all you have to do is have a little thought experiment in your area if, if, you're, if, you're, if your target is your area. What do people... So I've got a train going past and it's going to toot its horn 50 times. Um, but it makes sense. Look at, look, at the, look at the graph here. So people get to work around 8 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock. Okay. They're getting bored already. So you, the darker blocks are where the majority of people and on the days, the highest engagement. Okay, that's the majority of people that are going to click on a newsletter, email, a post you send out or something like that. So they're not going to click at 5 p.m. They're heading home and they're not going to click at night, believe it or not. Your best time is between 11 a.m. because people have probably got all their emails out the way, 10, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So they've either got all their emails out the way for the day, they've done a bit of work to impress the boss and now they just want to browse the internet and play around. So really take notice of that, okay? Nine o'clock in the morning is not too bad. That's when they'll start, especially on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, okay? Monday, Tuesday, looks like they're doing some work, but everywhere else, it, they're just getting into it. And the same can be said, it talks about non-profits here, okay? Uh, best time to post for education, best time to post for healthcare. Now, this is us. Now, this is really interesting, this, because if you look at uh, people in the healthcare industry, people are looking at, at home. Now, this does make a little bit of sense if you think about it because people might be looking for their kids if their kids are sick or, okay, now I've got to get fit. You know, I've just finished 15 Christmas turkeys and now I want to, um, I want to lose some weight, you know. Not that I need to, you know, I'm, I'm in, I'm in tip-top shape. Um, but anyway, you, you might want to have a look at this Facebook engagement. Now, this is going to, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, it's all the same. It's social media, basically. Okay. So, um, so what, we, what we're going to do here is now, hello, Tracy, how are you? Um, so if Michael or Tracy have any questions, they can ask a question. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about 
uh, just finishing it off and sharing sharing your your post. Now, Tracy, I know you've joined us a little bit late, but we're going to I'm going to be posting this video up on YouTube for you while you're while you're snacking. Um, all right, so. Um, okay, so basically the final part of this is when to share your post, okay? So we've gone over how you create your post, how you do your keyword research, how you set up your, your services pages, all that sort of stuff. So we, we've talked about the sharing and the best times to share for healthcare, okay, through here. Okay, so that's going to be really important for you, okay? Um, another thing I do with sharing, just to finish off, is is I actually do um, I use Canva. So all of my articles have this sort of um, design and I can change the image by dragging and dropping that image. But I keep this and I, I have like a bunch of different colours that I use palettes for them. There's no specific purpose behind the colours, but I do that. The reason I do that is because if I'm going to share this article on social media, I'm going to, um, I'm going to share it and this is the image they're going to be pulled in. So if I share it on Facebook, it's not going to be just a photo. It's going to have some content in the in the image, and that's why I do this. It's not everybody does it, and it's not it's not the be all and end all, but it's not a bad little idea to do that. Okay, so I basically have a whole bunch of images that I've got from all these free, free websites with images, and then I just basically throw that image as a background, so that when somebody shares the post, they're going to share, and it's going to be with that image. The other thing I do is I'll copy and paste this and, and paste it into a text document, my market, my introduction marketing message. And so I'll use that on social media. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so basically that's how you uh, write a blog post. I've got a couple, of, I'll just explain a couple of the extra little features I've got because I did expect this to go for about 25, 30 minutes and we're nearly, time's nearly up. But um, see, I have a thing called Amazon Polly. Uh, and I'm going to show you um, how that actually works. It's a text to, it's a text to speech uh, tool, and it and it will just automatically come with each post. But however, I can choose what language this is going to be read in. Okay, so let's just click on uh, this previous one. It's not perfect, but it it's pretty good. It automatically makes a podcast of each post. So click on that. Introducing Yakadanda sessions for customers. At the Akadenda, we are always... So it does, it does sound very much like a computer, but at the same time, it's not a bad little feature to have if someone wants to listen to your, your article instead of, uh, instead of read it. Okay, so that's, that's a little plug-in called Amazon Poly. It's developed by WP Engine and Amazon. Um, I, so the final thing I'm going to do is just show you a little bit about the SEO for the article. Okay, just to finish up. So here... You'll see it, this is uh, using Yoast, and all of my clients' websites use this. So basically, I've created the title, and you know, SEO likes it. If you're in the green, it means that, that likes it. And then I've, I've got a little a little paragraph. This is what's going to appear in Google search. This paragraph. So it wants to contain SEO rich key phrases. Okay, and the title is pretty much automated. I'll edit that if it gets into red or green. If it, the if the title's too long. So I could probably have double the length of that and the title will still be fine, okay? And I've, this focus key phrase, usually one, two, maximum three words, this, this is not something that Google looks at. Google doesn't care about keywords. Um, it looks at the total content. However, this is a good indication of how you're doing for your blog post. So if your blog post is about functional medicine or nutrition advice, then you want to make sure you rank for the main word, the main phrase that you think people are going to type in to Google to find you. So I've, I've done pretty well here, okay? There's one thing it's asking me to do is to, to fix the, the stop words. So I'll go up here, and this is the st stop words are things like at, but, it, and, in, etc. So you can see I've got a stop word here, a, a. So I'm going to get rid of that. Just take that out of my URL, click OK, and now... Now I should be, that. Gee, that's now gone. Okay, this thing I'm not going to be able to fix. And you'll usually have a few of these uh, that you can't. It, it's asking the key phrase, which is SEO rich, to put that at the start of the article. I could do that, but I, I'm not going to. Okay, I, I could make the article SEO rich um, WordPress posts for, for building your business, whatever. But I'm not going to do that. 
Um, the readability analysis is something normally you'll do a lot worse at, okay? And I've got a real issue where I always use transition words, okay? Um, uh, where I don't use enough transition words, okay? Um, so that's transitioning from one phrase, uh, one, one little sentence to another. Um, not doing well on that. But normally I'll have two or three orange ones in here, and that's not something to be to that concerned about. One, thing, one tool I do use is Grammarly. It costs about $100 a year, but basically it tells me, it basically fixes my grammar if I've got, if I'm not using capitals. See, there's a whole bunch of little um, things that tells me I should be doing to fix this article. And I'll usually go through this. Some of it I'll ignore. Um, but for the most part, it's really good. And once I've finished with it, I just click outside it and, it, and, it, and it, all those fixes are done inside the article. So that's pretty cool as well. So there you go. That's, um, you know, this is blogging for growth. Basically, how to write a, a, a perfect blog post. I'm going to cut and edit this afterwards and I'll throw it up there online. Um, uh, but uh, I hope you enjoyed enjoyed this and uh, and uh, hopefully next time we'll get a few more people in here. Um, but it's the first it's the first time I've done this, so I've made a few little errors. And uh, hopefully uh, we're going to be do the, doing this every single month. It'll be a different topic each month. And if anyone has any questions, fire them away. If you've got any questions now, you can ask me a question now if you if you want. But if you don't have any questions, I'll I'll finish it up. You can type it into the chat. You should have a little chat bot at the bottom. Michael, do you want to ask a question? You can type it in, or you can. Yes, I am in a garage. This is my. This is where I work from. I work from my garage. Next time, I'll put my motorbike in here so I can sh show that off a little bit. But um, yeah, so I've got most of my. I've, up here, I've got most of my stuff. I've got a few cameras here. This is a cool little tool. It's a little gimbal. Um, it's actually probably outdated because yesterday, this basically allows you to um, to film yourself, and you can actually put your phone in there. And it keeps it smooth, and then you can track. You can track yourself. You can even put it on yourself and track it. But they, DJI yesterday released a new thing called DJI Pocket, which is like an action cam on a gimbal. It's it's really tiny, but it looks really cool, and it'll be something that I'll hopefully Santa will bring me at Christmas time. Okay. Um, yeah, but that's my garage. That's where that's where I sleep because I get up at about three or four a.m. every day. Um, so. I, I usually I'm usually zonked out by about 2 p.m. with the kids and uh, got, oh, everyone's off to school. I just have a little one hour kip. Yeah, but yeah, thanks Michael for pointing out that I'm in a garage. All right, well I'm going to head it off now and uh, and we'll we'll chat soon. But thanks for joining us, guys.